our uh, batting cleanup is Richard Redmond. We're going to talk about damming the dams of the Adirondacks. Undamming <laughs> Destroying the dams. Uh, I'm Rich Redmond. I uh, retired eight years ago from the USDA uh, Soil Conservation Service. I spent my entire career in the Lake Champlain watershed from Washington County, Essex, and Clinton County. So I'm pretty familiar with all the streams and all that. Done a lot of work with EWP, put a lot of riprap in, did all kinds of stuff. And now things are changing, and uh, so we're kind of progressing in that. So, anyway, the biggest thing is our goal is to remove as many dams that are non functional, non usable. We're not trying to take out all the power dams, everything else. But if a dam has been sitting there for years, nobody's maintained it, why keep it? Why put any money into it? I put a fish ladder in, all that other stuff. So that's what this is about. First, I'm going to kind of go through the Rome Dam, Quarry Dam, uh, Willsboro Dam, uh, and then I'm going to go into our, the biggie is the Imperial Dam, the plaza. So but for my, why I remove the dams? Provide habitat, you know, fish passage, all that good stuff. Everything we've been here in the last couple of days. This is the Quarry Dam. This is right down the road. If you know where the river road ties into Route 86. We go down about a half a mile on the left hand side. There's a little little rise in the road and some rock ledge right there. There's an old uh, stone quarry right in there. That's where the name comes from. But there was a dam back there for J.J. Uh, Rogers in uh, the Osable Forks for um, holding back logs and all that stuff for the paper mill. So this is it before. You can see on the right hand side that block in there and then on the left hand side it kind of drops. Got some pretty good velocity water flowing through there. Beautiful pool down below and a beautiful pool on the bend up above. Uh, just to make sure, I want everybody to know, we don't do this alone. This, this is in conjunction with everybody. We've got Fish and Wildlife, DEC, uh, Soil and Water people, uh, everybody that we can that will partner up with us. We want to make sure. So this is one of the signs we put at the, at the uh, Cory Dam removal to let the public know, because this was on state land. So you get a lot of people kind of freaking out when they see a, an excavator cruising through the woods. You know? so, so this is the dam. You can see that block on the right. So that, this is basically the, the base of the dam. There were stacked logs in there that they put, put boards and, and logs in there to hold back the, uh, the logs. Again, that's, that's that block. So the easiest way to do it without blowing it up was an excavator. So we got all our permits. We went through uh, DEC. We had forest out there market trees. We cut a roadway through state land, about 400 yards maybe. Dropped down into the river, got the machine out there. He started with the bucket, but that concrete was so hard, he ended up going out and renting and got a power hammer as he chipped it away. So between the two, he, he was able to get most of it done. But he did throw a track in there, and he had to nurse that out. And that, that, that was a couple of days, but it was an adventure. So here it is with that block removed. So you can see that water drop, and this is that concrete on the left, and the natural bedrock in the right have a curves around. This is Bill Schott and Don Lee. Bill is a retired DEC biologist. He was the one <coughs> that brought this to our attention and said, hey, let's get this 40 dam out of here. This is great for fishing. So he kind of got the whole thing started. So you can see that level the first day when I took that block out, that little edge there, how much that water dropped out already. This is up above. You can see it narrowed up the river a little bit, and it's starting to riffle in there, which is good for uh, fish bugs and all that stuff. So there's the riffle again. So, to me, I'm, I'm an ecologist. I like putting all the pieces together. It's not just about going out fishing. It's about the ecology of the soil. <coughs> it's about everything. So the whole benefit is, is to get fish in there, to get the bugs, to get everything everything back to what it was before we goofed it up. This is uh, when it out. You can see that bend in there goes around. The water level dropped about two feet, but uh, we've got some beautiful fishing in there. Again, there it is afterwards. So you've got some velocity in that main section, but if you look to the left, there's these little notches, and that's where they figure that the fish would be able to migrate through. When the water goes down, of course, it's a little hot right now. The Boquet River. The Boquet is a tributary to Lake Champlain, the town of Willsboro. The dam is about a mile from the mouth of the lake. The lake. 
So this wooden crib dam was in there for years. When I first started my job, they were always complaining about the ice building up behind the dam, and everybody wanted to go put riprap in and narrow the river and all that stuff. And after 30 years, it was decided to just take the dam out. So there it is, a couple hundred feet across. This again was for a um, pulp company, did the process paper and all that stuff, and, and the black ash for the pulp process. They put in huge pipes and pumped it across the river and filled this huge area, kind of like a quarry, with all this black ash. So if you go out there, you've got all this stuff, it's kind of like graphite powder or something. Really funky stuff. But we're trying, we're trying to get vegetation on that. Uh, black willows work pretty good if you get them down with the moisture. They'll grow in there. Aspens are growing in there. So it's starting to vegetate better. This is the dam again. You can see the debris build up. This is this is you know part of the problem with the ice jamming up above it would flood the town and all that. <coughs> so the easiest thing was get an excavator in there. Well, I love excavators. So they went on that far side, start pulling that, that apart and dropping that water bottle, you know. I, I started with, with uh, soil conservation when you couldn't put machinery in, in the river. And that was taboo. And I'll tell you, you try to get a copper dam. Or you try to get something in there, when you can't put a machine in there, you've got a high velocity of water and you carry a sand back out there, and you drop it and it gets swoosh down the street. I mean, it doesn't work. So you put a bunch of them in a, a tractor bucket, and take it out there, you dump them out, and you can start building something. So here's the wooden crib dam, and here it is gone. On the left hand side, that concrete structure there, that was a fish ladder that never worked. <coughs> and that's why. I oppose fish ladders to this day. I've seen that. I mean, there's beautiful salmon in there down, down where this cascade goes down into the pool. Beautiful fish, but uh, they've never made it up through that, that fish ladder. But that dam would leak in so many places they'd get confused because they'd go to all where all this water was coming and they couldn't go up the uh, fish ladder. This is the pool down below, so you can see the cascade as it comes down. A lot of industrial stuff in there. Uh, they had a grant for, I believe it was. 300 some thousand dollars to do a lot of uh, work on the bank over there, get all that concrete and that out. But they were afraid of what they were going to find in there. So they just said, nah, they're not going to touch it. So this is down below a little bit. This is where the tail out is, if you can see kind of to the right in the background, that's where the salmon will lay. They'll come up in the, in the rapids and they'll get right into that end of that tail out of that pool and they'll lay right in there. So swing a big fly or something, you get a chance. Little biological study, fish and wildlife, we're in there testing. This is some of the fish they're getting. <coughs> then, of course, you got a fisherman got to go, they got to do biological samples. So, so, this guy just happened to be down there taking pictures of a little taking photos. So, we uh, got that with him today. Rome there. This is on the west branch of the Osable, just up from the village of Osable Forks, maybe half a mile, a mile upstream. It was. Uh, when Hurricane Irene came, there was a lot of problems. There was a threat of it going out. So basically, FEMA money and Osceola River Association, DEC, and all these people got together and they went in and they basically pulled it out. So here's an aerial view. You can see the hole back up behind it. Basically, the fish couldn't go in there, and what was in there was warm water from from the solar input. So um, there it is gone. Pull that whole thing thing out of there. Got all the concrete, all, all, all the gravel and everything. So now you got this beautiful canyon with this white water going through there, gravel bar build up, and a big pool down below. <coughs> Again, like I said, it's about ecology, it's about bugs and fish and all that stuff. I mean, it's not about fishing, fishermen, and, and getting the big fish. You know, to me, it's about the ecology. Many flies, round trout. There's a picture of it again. Here's a picture looking upstream where the dam was, right up through there. So I mean, there's some, there's some soil on the bank and stuff. You get a couple of good flows of rains, heavy rains, it'll flush all that stuff out and go down into uh, say the forks and, 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 and the river. As I can talk to you more quickly, if the river is sound width and depth wise, it'll flush a lot of that stuff right through. If it gets over wide, that's where you start settling to get gravel bars and get islands and all kinds of stuff. This is the baby. This is the one that my guys in the Total Limited chapter <coughs> have been working for over 30 years trying to get this up. My one friend of mine, he's uh, 
76. The other guy is in his 80s. They've been working on this for years. The guy that's 76 was a uh, fighter pilot in Vietnam. He said, if I could get a plane, I'll do a mission and we'll take that thing out of it. <laughs> There's the dam. You can see that was the powerhouse on the left hand side. The panels on the powerhouse missing way over width stream. I mean, that's flat. It's all bedrock in there. Uh, probably 15, 20 years ago, the, the dam was breached. Well, not breached, but they inspected it and said it could fail. So they ended up putting these uh, concrete abutments up against it. To, kind of hold the dam up, you know. So it hasn't been used in 30 years. It's owned by uh, Jacobs McCompany Company out of uh, California. And the earthen portion, there's some of the panels that are missing. The earthen portion on the right was spill, spillway is owned by the state. They went in and they bought that with the hope of putting a fish ladder in there. This was years ago. Uh, in the last body, which Pataki was in, that was for 98, he allocated money for a fish ladder, and it's still nothing's been spent yet. So I think we're looking at how many years? 22, 30 years, whatever. So our goal is to remove this thing entirely. There's no reason for it. They haven't used it in 30 years. There is scuttlebutt out there that the guy that owns it in California wants to put in some kind of low head power. Well, if he does that, He's required by FERC to put in a fish ladder. So if the fish ladder is going to go in, he's paying for 100%, not the taxpayers. But I think we're just, what we think is he's basically trying to, to get the value of the dam higher. I don't know if he wants to sell it or whatever. So here's, here's the wooden panels you can see. There's actually a photo coming up where uh, one of these panels is down by the Allen Street pool. Beautiful pool for salmon. It's wedged up against the rock. It doesn't meet the current safety standards. So that long, it should, yeah, it's a class C dam. The impoundment basically collects solar energy up above it, and it allows the ice build up. There's no real reason to keep it. It's a class C high hazard dam. Again, it allows ice formation, solar energy, especially with this talk about climate change. Why would we want to keep an impoundment that's 60 plus acres, almost 80 acres, that's collecting solar energy and for, for why? You know, when we could basically take the dam out there and reduce that, reduce that impact down to probably a quarter of the size. So there's public safety, environmental, and recreational benefits, lower water temperature, uh, restore the native salmon fishery. The salmon at one time used to go all the way up to uh, Kent's Falls, which is about 13 miles. Right now they can only go 3.1 miles. Public safety. <clears throat> one of the concerns was Ice gym. If you know, you probably get the class with paper. But a few years ago, uh, when the ice went out, the weather like we had the last couple of days, the ice went out, jammed up, and went over a berm. It went into a trailer park, of course. And the trailer park was built in a wet. So it went in there and it wiped out dozens and dozens of trailers. So the governor put seven million dollars in to fix it getting people new, new trailers, which I, I don't have a problem getting new trailers, but why put them back in, in the hazards? You know, let's relocate them and do anything. So. so here's the dam. You can see some of the ice buildup down below. Moving water, of course, if you, if you like to fish, moving water doesn't uh, uh, <coughs> form ice. We, we get 30 below up there, no problem. So you know you get some pretty good ice buildup. But again, this is below the dam. The water's moving. Get some good ice building, but the water's moving through there, and you don't have a big accumulation. But up above, you go. <coughs> got a huge area where you get a foot of ice, a foot, foot, this, a foot, foot thickness of ice up in there, over 80 acres. This is this is the dam is in the left right there. This is looking up from the dam all the way up the river. Okay, so. Uh, that's where the accumulation of ice comes. It comes down and wipes out these chair cards. And it wasn't the first time. This, this has been done numerous times in the past. And basically, they're putting a band-aid on the wound, and they're not going after the cause. They're just you know, going in and putting something in there to make it look good. But you've got to fix the cause. Where does the ice go? Downstream into uh, 
in the Plattsburgh, the jam's up. Like I said here, 217 Underwood Park was flooded. <coughs> $7 million went into repairing it. They actually built the berm higher. Instead of locating, relocating the people, they put the berm higher and put driving trailers in So here's down below. This is right in the city, right down the, if you know downtown Plattsburgh, looking over where the monument is, that's the big bend in there. Uh, it was old industrial, but that's what's really coming along great right now. And it's a, a nice tourist destination, beautiful uh, sand bar. And we're about the thermal, thermal effects, right? Climate change. This is right off the EC's website. You know, increase of 2.4 degrees, 4.4 degrees, ice jams. You know, most ice jams are sitting with sudden warm spells, and you like this weather we're having. You never know, and you don't need that problem. Here is a uh, photo looking at the dam with the open, open water in there. This is where all that solar heat would go and warm that water. So we're looking at Atlantic salmon fishery here. Beautiful landlocked salmon. And you got this warm water up above. That's going to have to warm it up going into this river. Again, that's looking up above. So you, you got wetlands on the side, but basically they're artificial wetlands because they were created by the dam. A few years back, they did some work doing some borings and stuff like that along the dam to test the stability of the, the berm. So they dropped the water drop level down about a third. So it's pretty neat to see what it looks like. And you've actually got a channel in there. You've got this big area on the side. Now this is one third of maybe, a, <coughs> maybe an 18 foot high dam. So say it's at 12 foot. So you've already you've very, really made a change there by dropping that. So you can see that again. Now if you look close in the middle, there's a guy in there. So where that water level was, was about where you can see that white froth where the water spills over the dam and it hits the side of the dam and pushes out. So that's about where the water level was when they dropped it. And now with this guy down here, you can see it was, that was about a third of the, of the height of the dam. So with, with climate change, why would we want to keep the Imperial, uh, Imperial Dam that solar heat collected in Palmer? I mean, there's no recreational use above it. There's no houses on, on that all the way up until Kent's Falls. There's no camps. There's nothing in there. If you drive up the north way, when you go across the Saranac, if you look downstream, you'll see Indian Rapids. That's the old Lozier Dam. And if you look upstream, you'll see old Friedenberg Dam. And you'll see an outlet to where the Kent's Falls power. Recreational beds, of course, it's all about landlocked salmon. <coughs> right now, 3.16 from Lake Champlain to the area there. This is the, um, the uh, Indian Rapids, they call it, the Lozier Dam. If, if they move salmon up above the Imperial Dam, then this is a restriction by law through the company NEL uh, that owns the Kent Falls Dam. They have to open this up and allow fish passage. So we're hoping that we can get through with it. This has never been tested. I mean, that fish ladder on the Kent Falls has been there 30 years, and nobody's tested to see if it works. And based on some of the talks I heard yesterday, 30 year old technology, I can bet it doesn't. This is the Friedenberg Dam, and in the bottom left, that's where the, the water outlet is for the uh, power company from uh, Kent Falls, where that water comes out. This is the long strip from Kent Falls on the left all the way down to where the Friedenberg Dam is. There's supposed to be a fish ladder right up right by the dam, but I have not seen it yet, so I don't know what it looks like. This, if they opened up, removed the Imperial Dam, if the uh, Lozier Dam allows fish to it, and if the fish can get up that 30-year-old fish ladder, it'll have 13 miles of spawning waters for them, for them salmon. Which is natural. That's what, so as far as they can go up the Kent's Falls up in the left hand corner, that's where the, the natural barrier is. So you go from three point miles to 13. Fishery. This is what it's all about. Salmon. Spade casting. You see a bunch of guys from Quebec, uh, Montreal, all that. They all come down here to fish. This is right behind the college at Plattsburgh State University. This is called Elm Street. Some of the fish that they catch, this guy comes from Potsdam, this is his first salmon he ever caught, so he's tickled. There's the one I caught, my first, so I'm tickled. This guy comes down from Montreal, and most of the guys are running spay rods, they just like that. They kind of, 
They kind of fish pools like they would in Canada, like Miramichi or something. They'll all go through. There's, there's no big crowding. One guy will go through, he'll work his way halfway down, and somebody will come in the pool and finish. The guy will finish at the end, come walking back up, somebody else goes down. No, no big competition. It's really kind of neat. It's, it's kind of international computing. Computer. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I went down early in the morning, I figured I was going to. I was going to get in the pool and have the hot spot, but uh, this is Scott O'Brien. He owns the house right on the river, and of course he got out there. This is a big brownie picked up. <laughs> Another guy from Canada. This guy doesn't drive, so what he does is he exchanges fly fishing and, and salmon fishing courses with people if they drive them down the river, and then he, he teaches them how to fish. The EC sign, it's all about the regulations of the street and, and the lake. The Allen Street pool, and there's where it dumps into Lake Champlain. So our goal is to basically reconnect, restore, protect our rivers. That's what the mission is. And uh, basically, I'd like everybody's support and getting this thing out of here because the only thing that's stopping it right now is there's a concern about the lamprey. But we've talked to Fish and Wildlife, and they said not a problem. We can go up to Falls and we can treat them up there. It's an additional 2.17 miles or whatever. We can treat them up there to be minimum cost more. So I'm going by what they said, you know, by the experts, and not me. So, so for travel limit, this is what we do. We have 24 schools that we work with. Instead of the trout in the classroom, we have salmon in the classroom. Uh, we get we get salmon eggs, and every kid goes out there on a stream, whether it's Millbrook and Mariah or Oakhead, and they name the fish, and they all got their little cup of the fish, and they take out, they, they watch them go. You know? We're trying to do more education on reds. These are the dams that have come out. Uh, one of them was uh, Tony David talked about the, the one on Fort Covington. Uh, an imperial dam is on the bottom. That's that's the one we're hoping next. So again, it's time to stop the band-aid approach. It's used to the cause, not the symptoms. And that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs>